Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Well, another another day, right? And another day in the Middle East where it just seems like we are on the precipice of something really big happening and it it may not. I mean, we've been well, maybe not all of us, but some people have been on the edge of their seats now for two weeks just waiting for the next big shoe to drop. And it does appear that that is slowly moving forward, uh, but some things are happening today that's certainly giving some evidence that, that it's, it's moving that way. It's not stalling out just in case anyone's kind of thought that was what was going to happen. Um, a few things that I, I noticed today on the radar uh, was number one, the United States, they kind of killed any idea or any hopes of there being a ceasefire, at least now for, for a while. Uh, they said that they will not consider any kind of ceasefire agreement. Uh, I, I don't know how it is that the United States has the authority to do this. I mean, technically we're not involved, are we? So why is it that the United States has a say-so over this? But anyways, I digress. Uh, the United States said that they will not agree to any kind of ceasefire agreement as long as there are hostages held in Gaza. So that was one thing. Uh, Israel claims that they have conclusive evidence that Iran not only was directly involved, but directly orchestrated the attack. And of course, that makes you wonder at what point uh, would Israel potentially strike against Iran. They have threatened that for years, and of course Iran has threatened to strike Israel for years. Uh, but as Iran continues to build their nuclear weapons capability, uh, and some say they're already there, it makes you wonder at what point would Israel take actions directly against Iran. Uh, the United States uh, Pentagon has saying that they expect things to continually escalate uh, with uh, Iran and uh, Hamas-backed or Hamas pro-Hamas terrorist groups in the region. There has been numerous attacks on U.S. soldiers uh, and on U.S. bases and installations throughout the Middle East, predominantly in Syria and Iraq. Uh, but uh, they say that they're basically on high alert because they believe that this could certainly escalate even further. Uh, and uh, Israel has said that they are there, there's no more negotiations on, on the ground invasion and they are not waiting until more hostages are released they are moving forward so it could be uh, a very real thing just in the last 24 hours or so they the, the news is at least is reporting that it's been the, the heaviest bombardment on gaza in history by israel uh, that they are hitting them pretty hard so it's very possible to, that a ground invasion could happen soon that they're kind of softening up the area uh, but who knows i mean that is typical uh, maneuvers in warfare is to to bombard the area before you move in on a ground invasion uh, there's a lot of stuff that we could just go on and on about. And I'm sure you all know of several things that I'm not mentioning. The bigger point is that I want to get to is that um, some of it I can't even I can't even put my finger on it. Uh, it's just more of a gut feeling. But I have a gut feeling that this this is a big deal and that this is going to expand into something bigger. And and I could be wrong. And a part of me really hopes that I'm incorrect on this. Uh, but I think that we are seeing something build uh, in a way that we have never seen before. I, I, in my lifetime, I've not seen U.S. forces build so rapidly and so much in one area in, in the time frame that it has. It, even in Afghanistan and uh, the Iraq war and all that, we didn't move in as this fast. It, it was, I mean, we're talking a, a week, a week and a half of we've moved in an immense amount of firepower into the region and we're moving in more. I mean, it's it's not ending, we're, we're, we're not done with that. Uh, China, of course, has moved in stuff. Uh, all of the, the nations in that area are activating and moving around stuff. Even uh, video shows that Russia has been potentially placing uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles on launch pads. Now, of course, we don't know if these are live rounds or what they are, but at least that's the footage that's been released that it's possible that even Russia is is taking a more aggressive and prepar preparative stance. So I do believe that this is a, a very different situation than uh, Ukraine. Um, I, you know, Ukraine was is bad, um, but this this is I think that there's there's too many other parties involved, too many parties that that are very divisive and that are very 
dead set on on following through with with what's going on so i i think that there's a whole much a whole big greater potential for this to kind of get blown out of proportion uh, a few things that i wanted to add with that is that uh, the other day on my locals channel which you should subscribe to locals if you want to see kind of my more personal direct behind the scenes uh sort of kind of content or uh, it's it's just it's different but I, I post videos over there every day also but anyways i had gotten some some intel and i i usually give a lot more intel on locals than i do here on youtube and and sometimes intel comes in that I don't even know if you want to qualify it as intel, but it's, you know, some random person that I don't know that may not even leave their name or just maybe like, you know, they sign it Bob, right? Uh, or something like that. And they send this intel that, you know, well, my cousin uh, is a Green Beret. And my cousin says, D -d 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 -d. or, you know, my neighbor works for the FBI. And he told me, D -d 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 -d. do you completely discount that kind of stuff? Not necessarily. Uh, but you certainly don't just jump right into it and say, oh my goodness, this is what's going on. Because you have no clue of if it's, if it's legitimate or not. And so a lot of times I will mention that in passing on locals, but I will certainly clarify that this is not solid intel. It's just something out there. So put it on a shelf and just maybe it, something pans out. But when I start to get similar levels of intel, similar types, similar stories coming in from different sources, then I start to listen, and especially when those sources are personal friends and people that I know and trust. And if I want to, I mean, I'm not going to tell you, but I can backtrack the, the intel. I can, you know, people that I can actually verify who they are, then that's different. And so that's what I'm going to tell you here in just a second. So I'd gotten this intel, and it was kind of like the example that I just gave you. Well, a friend of mine, actually it was a neighbor, a neighbor of mine, is a former, you know, I can't remember exactly how he described it, but basically Delta Force is what he said. Uh, you know, they go by a few different acronyms and names because that's not their official name, but he said, my, my neighbor was former Delta Force and uh, said that there was some black ops mission that was going on since the Israeli Hamas things that happened. And it was a failed mission. And, and basically, uh, because of that, these terrorist groups in Iran and everyone has um, activated their, their cells, their, their sleeper cells here in the United States. Now, that's crazy sound. It sounds like something out of QAnon or something like that. Uh, but, you know, I, I kind of put that over on the shelf and, and you know, let it, let it stew and see if anything happens after that or anything more. Well, today I spoke with a close personal friend. This is one of the very few people, if anyone knows me personally, they know I, it, it, I, I'm, I'm very protective. One, this is one of the few people that I would really trust with just anything. I, I trust this person, you know, if I'd give him my bank account numbers, my passwords. I, I'd trust that he would protect my wife and children. That, that's the kind of person this is. This is a trusted personal friend. And that it was a direct family member of his that he has direct communication with all the time that works in Washington, D.C. for DHS in a higher level position, not not low level, but higher level. And I can't go much in more detail because I'm afraid I could start to give away who this is and I don't want to get them in trouble. You don't have to believe me. You can say this is just hogwash. I don't really care. It's not your channel. But anyways, he said that number one, this connection, which is family, said, absolutely, you need to be getting prepared fast. And he knows he's a prepper and he says, you keep doing what you're doing, you do a lot more of it and you do it quickly. And then while his intel wasn't as direct as the one that guy that emailed that was, you know, a Delta Force neighbor, blah, blah, blah. He said pretty much the same thing, that they had intel that, that Iran and other terrorist groups that kind of control these sleeper cells had sent out codes or whatever and had activated sleeper cells here in the United States. And they, they, they don't really have a whole lot of intel, but they're worried and concerned because they know that at any moment that just because they send out, that just because they activate them, it doesn't mean that everyone goes out immediately and does something destructive. It just means that they're in active status and that maybe they have certain specific orders or maybe they're just orders are to take advantage of a moment if you have to do something. 
But the point is, is that um, that's what's been told by this person. Uh, everyone at like his level, certain level and above, um, has been told that they have to keep their phones on at all time. They cannot be any further than 30 minutes away from their job, period, even when they're off duty. Um, and and they're, they're very concerned with uh, with what's going on. It's, it's possible, I, this isn't clarified, but it's possible a lot of the activity that people are reporting in the last couple of weeks of military, increased military activity, it looks like increased training and stuff or troop movement or equipment movement may be part of that. Now the point is, is number one, I'm not trying to scare you, I'm trying to give you a clear warning. Um, we don't know that this is a case. Even if everything that this person told me is absolutely true and, and that this person it came from a very solid source, that still does not mean that these things will in fact happen. But I think most of you realize that due to the amount of illegals that's pouring into this country over the last few years, the amount of cells that we know for certain, if you do the digging, you can see where there's evidence, there's known uh, sleeper cells into the thousands in this country. Uh, th there were back after the, the whole Gulf War, you know, uh, you know, 9-11 and all that stuff, and they just, they just kind of disappeared. No one know what, knows what happened to them. Well, they're still around. And then all of this stuff that's happening in the Middle East, I think it's becoming much, much more likely that this kind of stuff could directly happen. Uh, we've heard from DHS, from uh, the Defense Department and State Department, all these warnings that things could start happening here in the United States and that we need to be ready. You know, there's this, there's this travel alert now for all U.S. citizens anywhere, including here in the United States, to be on alert for uh, th certain threats. So my point is, is that I, I don't want you to live in fear and I don't want you to lock yourselves in your home, but I want you to take things quite seriously because I think they are right now. And I think that you should, of course, keep doing all the preparation stuff that I tell you about. Stocking up on things, make sure things are topped off, uh, keep your head on a swivel, watch your six, you know, don't go into places that you shouldn't go, that you know are just dangerous places if you can avoid them. Uh, start working and, and, and activating your own plan, you know, whatever plan you have to communicate in your family and to move about or your tribe or your mag, make sure that stuff is already good to go. You know, if you have meeting places, if you have ways to communicate, rendezvous points for your children that may work or go to school whatever it is that stuff needs to be in place now and you need to go over it and it's probably not a bad idea to do your own little activation of it um, all these things that i tell you don't mean that they're actually going to happen but i'm pretty sure that most of you agree that they probably have an increased chance so we need to take it seriously and get ourselves ready um the, the 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 many repercussions that could happen if some of these sleeper cells start activating are just pretty broad in fact I don't know that the damage that they would do would be all that great unless they took out the grid or some kind of big thing. Uh, but even if it's a small thing that they do, the, the amount of panic, the widespread panic of the people and the reaction uh, of the government, those really to me are probably more dangerous than anything. But most certainly they could take out you know, very critical pieces of our infrastructure. So. Uh, you need to be getting your houses in order and taking all this stuff serious. The things that's happening, and, and if it, you know, it's, it's too much to talk about in one video. You start putting all these pieces together, what different nations are saying and what they're doing with their troops and what they're doing with this and that. And you look at the economy and, you know, uh, China, they've been selling off uh, U.S. Treasuries at a faster pace than ever just in the last 30 days. Uh, all of the stuff that's happening is not good at all. And there's just almost like this bad feeling that when you step back and see it all, that we, not just we as the United States, but we as people, as citizens of the earth, are headed pretty, pretty headstrong down a very dark road of, of global war and, and a, lot of, a lot of hurt and pain. And I think it's all part of the Agenda 2030 plan. Uh, they, they want a reset, and a reset is not just a, a nice little restructuring. A reset is tear it all down to the ground and rebuild it new. I mean, that's basically what they've said if you start reading their, their literature. And I think that's what we're starting to see happen. So you need to buckle up and get ready. Uh, get serious and get your houses in order. Folks, prepare mentally, physically, and very especially spiritually. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.